Hello and welcome to Quarterlight. Quarterlight is very much a fledgling channel where we look at car brochures from around the world. Today's brochure, the Volvo 760 and 740 estate. So let's run the introduction and then we'll look at this particular brochure. So the Volvo 700 series of cars were first introduced in 1982 and it ran all the way to 1992. First of all we got the 760 which was the initial idea of bringing this very much an executive classed vehicle with high levels of trim and a six cylinder engine. Later on came the 740 with a four cylinder engine, lower specs, a much more affordable vehicle. And it was designed by someone called Jean Wilsgaard. Initially, it was there to replace the aging Volvo 200 series of automobiles. However, this never actually happened because they were so popular and therefore they continued selling those to the early 90s. But anyway, let's have a look at this particular brochure and see what more information we can see inside. So first thing we notice on this page is uh, a little bit of an introduction about the tradition of Volvo. Then it goes on to tell us what models are available. This is a UK brochure and it's 1986. It goes on to start saying this brochure is about the 740 and 760, but then tells us a little bit about the Volvos available at this time. So we've got a 340 hatchback and saloon, that's sort of like the basic or start a small Volvo. I seem to remember at the time a lot of people didn't really see these as true Volvos, but nevertheless they are here, available as a 1.4 or a 1.7. We've also got the Volvo 360. The same looking car, but here it's available in a two litre engine. We go on to the 240 saloons and estates, possibly my favourite Volvos, very much traditional, very square bodied, still available. Like I've said, the 700C was really there to replace the 200 series, but it never actually happened. It was a very popular car, particularly in the 80s. And then it talks about the 740. Uh, talking about this as being uh, bounds road holding, ride comfort, performance and fuel economy. It was certainly an improvement over the 200 series. The 760, as it says here, is the flagship model. And it's talking here about built to limousine levels of luxury. So there we go, that then folds out to show this full size picture, triple page spread of the new Volvo 700 series. And this looks like it's a 740. The 760 tended to have different wheels and a lot more chrome. I can see what a practical vehicle this is. I've chose to look at the estates today because that's really what makes more sense. You always think about Volvo and estates and that's where the real practicality lies. I remember when these cars came out and I wasn't a huge fan of the styling. I didn't really like this sloping front end um, compared to the more traditional 200 series. But it's kind of grown on me now. I do think it's a good looking car. Also, Motor Impress didn't really rate it either when it first came out. That wasn't until they uh, test drove the uh, 760 Turbo. And then all of a sudden it made sense. For such a big car, it did handle really well. Particularly when you compared it to the 200 series. Which was more of an extremely solid car. But really didn't have the road holding and road manners that the 700 did. And now we get the first look of the 760. In fact, this is the 760 GLE, and that would have been using the V6 engine. So the six in this case, as in 760, makes sense with this particular one. 
and you can see it uses a lot more chrome on the grill um, on the side strips you know around the windows and it's got these very attractive light alloy uh, wheels on there as well but obviously it's the same body i mean you could essentially just call this the 700 the volvo 700 and this in four terms would have been like the gear or the gear x the 740 would have been more like an L or a GL, but Volvo liked to separate them really because they really like to show this one as an executive car. Like I say, it's talking about limousine levels of luxury. So they tried to move it into a different class to the cheaper, um, lower spec 740 that came a couple of years later. This next page is well, it's, it's titled the balance of technology and tradition basically it's talking about the different specifications automatic gearbox options manual gearbox options etc etc and certainly spec levels as well you would never really get something like this today even though brochures really aren't around today but you would never get something like this today because it's very wordy today people just want to see pictures of the cars but here Volvo have decided to go into great detail um, about each individual component. I particularly like this section called Tireless Comfort, where it says orthopedic specialists played a major part in designing the front seats of the 740 and 760. Clad in a variety of luxurious and hard wearing materials, they offer armchair comfort but with the correct amount of support to keep fatigue to a minimum. It was really a very comfortable car. But of course, when you think about Volvo, one of the main things is safety. So even though they was creating this executive car, they still very much in the forefront was safety. And this is what we think about when we think about Volvo estates lots of space very practical this nice split folding seat so you've got that luxury but you've also got that extreme space and of course you've got your dalmatian in the back and i think particularly when you we looked at the volvo 200 the volvo 200 really opening up a new sort of segment in a way the volvo 200 was seen as a your countryman's car where you took your dog into the countryside for a walk and through your muddy boots in the back. In some ways, the 200 was almost like what we think of um, a Land Rover Discovery in the 90s. No, no, the Volvo estate wasn't four wheel drive by any stretch of the imagination, but it was seen as that sort of countryside car. And I really, the 740 and 760, really tried to um, take it one step further by making it more luxurious, uh, by making it um, a, an even more practical car in a way. But people still loved that Volvo 200, hence why they kept it on as a lower version. And here would have been the base model in the UK at the time, the 740 GL. But you can really see that lovely uh, rear hatch making it a very much accommodating space. Yeah, we always talk about Volvos. Oh, the, the biggest criticism were really, oh, the two boxy. But that boxy shape really helped it carry huge loads. Now a very wordy page entitled A Sound Investment. Talking about things like rust protection. And it's talking about these ventilated door sills for lasting protection. And it's even talking about this little nice little section which goes on to say, uh, a Volvo must also perform efficiently in extremes of cold and heat. Electrically systems and heating and ventilation units show their true colours in our climate chambers, where we can subject them to rapid changes of temperature between minus 40 and minus 50. Yes, this was a Swedish car, so you know, it did have that about them. And even here in Manitoba in Canada, where it can actually get to minus 40, and it does every year, they did very well in them sort of temperatures. 
And yes, they did last well. These cars in general had a very hard life. It was a family car. It wasn't a sports car that was pampered and looked after. Uh, a lot of them was used as police cars, etc. But they did stand up well to that sort of treatment. So we still see 740s and 760s on the roads today purely because they were really well protected and really well built. It wasn't one of these cars, oh it's lasted really well, well yeah, it lives in a garage and comes out once a week. This was a car used every day and it was battered and used and it was always put through the rigorous uh, treatment on a day to day level but they still held up very well. So it was very much in that Volvo tradition. Here we have one of my favourite pages, the interior shot. And what a big square dashboard. It very much emanated the outside. These big square designs looking very solid were followed through to the interior. And this is very much an 80s car. We're at 80s. We're talking about nice swooping lines. Curves are coming into cars. Volvo said, no, we're going to keep these traditional straight lines. We're still going to stick to a ruler. I particularly like this uh, Volvo radio on here and it says please note the radio shown is a genuine Volvo accessory but a very high spec radio that would have been at the time with this little equaliser underneath it. So here we go, what we think about Volvo safety that's part of the volvo dna for sure you know the company that invented the seat back all those years back are still being very innovative in their safety and really the forefront of any volvo design so we've got these crumple zones we've got this safety cage we've got this nice collapsible steering wheel and even here it says we've got this dual circuit triangle split brake system even if one circuit should fail you still keep 80% of the braking effect. And all this safety was very important, not only for the obvious reasons, but also as a sales point. People did go to these because they knew they were big, safe cars. And there we go. Finally, we look at them big, comfortable, but very safe seats that we were talking about earlier. And they really do look exactly that particularly these very volvo-esque head restraints we can see on here a beautiful image and one thing to note about this brochure as well it's got really thick paper stock and it's a really big brochure as we can see it's really very much like the car itself the next page the volvo selection this is the accessories you could get on your volvo again it shows that volvo sound system which looks very upmarket for the time. In fact, it says, in-car entertainment, the executive package will transform your car into a mobile concert hall. The very best combination of audio equipment from the Volvo range offers a virtuoso performance to the discerning listener. I'm not sure how much that would have been, but you can imagine it would have been very expensive. You've got the very practical uh, roof racks, you've got these child seats, tow bars etc etc interestingly you've also got these extra seats for um, these rear facing uh, seats for two children all the way at the back there they look extremely uncomfortable they look more like some kind of like plastic deck chair but nevertheless you could have it and it's talking about the like, leveling, leveling system uh, something that's fitted as standard to the 760 um, basically to stabilize and level out your loads Something was very good for um, an estate car. On the final page, it's got on the left hand side the standard equipment available and the models available are the 740 GL, 740 GLE, 740 GLT, the 760 GLE, and the 760 Turbo. And then we've got the colour combinations. Uh, so lots of different uh, upholstery colours on there and uh, quite a reasonable amount of colour choices. They were never very good at um, giving the colours fantastic names like they did on British cars. 
the Swedish had a much more um, basic color range. So we've got black, we've got red, we've got white, we've got deep red, mid blue, silver metallic, red wood metallic, blue metallic, dark gray metallic, gold metallic, and blue green metallic. Not very imaginative colors, but nevertheless, they are there. And you can also see what color combinations you can get on various models and what uh, interior upholstery you could get with whichever colour car you chose. And the brochure finally ends on the back page with the technical information. And of course you can pause the video if you want to have a look in that in any great detail. So there we go, the 700 series, the 740 and 760 estate. A car that really grew uh, for motoring journalists who didn't like it at first but then grew to like it and I guess I was a bit the same, I was a bit unsure in the first few years that it came out, I wasn't keen on the design, I much preferred the more simpler 200 series but now looking back I would certainly have one, I do like the design of them now and them seats really do look fantastic. They were of course extremely long lasting cars and I guess certainly value for money if a little bit expensive to maintain. Thank you once again for watching Quarterlight. Please do like and subscribe and comment. I'm sure a lot of you have had 700 series Volvos. Let me know how you got on with them. But for now, we'll say take care and goodbye.